Praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid, and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is His servant and His messenger. Dear viewers, I greet you with the greeting of Al-Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of your show, For the Sake of Allah. Today we are dealing with a very important characteristic that may bring destruction to that beautiful bond of brotherhood. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us against that in the Quran. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us against it in the Sunnah and through his conduct and even Naturally, through the natural disposition and people through reason, people know that this thing destroys any relationship no matter how strong it is. We are dealing today with a disease, with a tumor that might destroy the bond of brotherhood, the divine bond that Allah has given us as a gift from Himself. As we know that the kind of brotherhood that is existent amongst the Muslims and between one another it doesn't exist anywhere else because it is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to them on account of their Iman. Now today we have our brothers, brother Muhammad and brother Abdul Rahman and inshallah we will discuss the issue and talk about it in detail and see how this illness or this tumor, selfishness, how it destroys brotherhood so that we can avoid it and understand its harms and keep away from that. Now, brothers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We know that selfishness is something that is deep in the soul of human beings. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about human beings, وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ إِلَى شَدِيدٍ Man, in his love for wealth, is very severe in that. Why? Because man loves his own benefit. It's all about being self-centered. It's natural, Allah created human beings with that tendency to seek their own benefit. And the child, once he is born, he always seeks to have the milk and the food because had it not been for this inclination or this disposition, man would die. So in some instances or at some stages of life, as long as it is kept moderate and within the limits, it is okay. It is necessary for survival. We need it because man always seeks his own benefit. It's a gift from Allah, but if we abuse it, and if we exceed the limit in that, then it is definitely going to destroy our bond of brotherhood, the relationships we have with others. And we can see that a lot of the enmity that happens, it emanates in the first place from selfishness. Selfishness. And anyone, since we were young in school and dealing with our colleagues and all that, the one who had selfishness, who was self-centered, people will turn away from him and we consider this to be an insult or something that or calling people names when you say oh selfish he's selfish no one want, wants to be called selfish so now let's see how this can affect the brotherhood and maybe destroy it and we all have experiences where we met people and selfishness really destroyed that kind of beautiful relationship we had I would like you to start with your contributions to this subject because no one in, lives in this world except that he had an experience with selfishness and we must have suffered from that. Of Maybe course. I hope none of us was selfish. A selfish person? No, no. Any relationship between two people has to be based upon certain things. Yeah. I mean, how can you build a relationship with someone? A caring and giving. Very good. Yeah. So you have to give Very something. Strange. Yeah. You have to give something from yourself. Very yeah. good. You have to give something from yourself. So it is about giving and taking. Yeah. Giving it and taking, it is something mutual. It, it can't be uh, one-sided. 
You can't say, okay, I have a good relationship with this brother. And uh, all the time you're giving him, you're sacrificing and you're compromising. And he takes all, everything from you and doesn't give you anything back. It doesn't make sense. Sure, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. It does, no. So it's based upon any relation. It's based upon rights, rights and obligations. Obligations, yeah. exactly. There's a balance. There's a state of balance. Yeah. If the balance is broken, that's it. It's over. This is what selfishness does. It comes to the core of the relationship. It breaks that balance. Well, I remember a yes, certain good. incident a long time ago. I had a brother, alhamdulillah. And he, I uh, had a little uh, booklet of Azkar, yeah. and he uh, liked it. And I, I really liked this booklet. It was uh, like a small, uh, small in size and handy and things like that. It had uh, uh, good Azkar. So I gave it to him that day. And uh, till now, he, uh, when, we, when we meet, we don't meet, we don't meet, meet often now. Uh, he tells me about this booklet, and this uh, brings happiness to me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, it's, it's something that very small, but still. I gave it away, and I liked it, and he's benefiting of it. Yeah. He, he's giving me, inshallah, a credit, uh, inshallah, to be accepted uh, uh, by it. So, uh, the secret to that, that was a very good thing that we can elaborate more on. You know, people think, or people are naturally inclined to think that happiness in getting more. The more you get, the more, or the happier you become. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People have this kind of understanding and people have no doubt about, they have certainty about it but actually they are saying to, uh, you know researchers in psychology they have come to the conclusion although this is known in Islam 1400 years ago but people came to know about it now especially people who deal with psychology they say that happiness is in giving when you give people you tend to be more happy or happier uh, and you can experience that yourself. If you see a poor person and he's in need, go and give him a gift. When you see how happy he is and that you have brought happiness to this sad heart, to this sad person, mm -hmm. you will feel extremely happy. You will be overwhelmed with the happiness that you have in your heart. Feel when you do happiness. something good, you feel happiness. And Allah knows that. Because He created us and He directed us to this. Now the Prophet Wasallam. He made clear the importance of being uh, a way or not to have this kind of selfishness, not being self-centered. When he said, and we all know the hadith, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه من الخير. No one of you will truly believe until he loves for his brother the good things that he loved for himself. Subhanallah. The good things he loved for himself. So, this is the attitude of the Muslim. It means that if you have true Iman, this will be your natural reaction. You will love for your brother the good things you love for yourself. So this is what Iman necessitates and entails. When you have Iman, it becomes natural. If a person is selfish, what does it indicate? Okay, there is something with his Iman. There is something that he hasn't really perfected his Iman. And um, well, we can see that clear in the life of the Prophet so, Can so, so. you remind us of anything? things that happened between the companions at the time of the Prophet وسلم, how they had no selfishness at all yeah. uh, how they, and how this strengthened this relationship, the brotherhood they had and how it helped create a better society Incidents uh, when the uh, Muhajirun uh, went to Medina and met them and, and started to, to give them like sharing the house MashaAllah He split the house in two giving them the uh, Muhajirin apart and uh, the Ansar apart and also uh, it's like uh, giving the, the, the money so th that presents a very good uh, base for Mashallah. not yeah. being selfish yeah. yani, Subhanallah. Uh, you see how iman creates yeah, a better sure. generation those people now the muhajirun as you stated they left all their wealth in mecca and they came to al-ansar to the people of medina now as muhammad told us that the al-ansar they were many of them they were rich they split their money. They made it into two halves. And the Prophet ﷺ made Al-Mu'akhal. Mu'akhal this kind of brotherhood. And we will never ever come across a brotherhood of that level. It is unsurpassed, unwitnessed, unknown about, unheard of example of brotherhood. They demonstrated their Iman and their love actually in their life in a tangible way. That I have, I have money, I'm from Al-Ansar. 
the brother came to me from Mecca. Prophet ﷺ made the Mu'akha, this brotherhood between me and him. Now what happened? They split their money and I give him half of it. Who would do that today? Who would do that? I'm, I doubt that. Bless this nation. So this is a beautiful value. We'll elaborate more on that inshallah. We'll try to drag lessons from this beautiful attitude, this beautiful characteristic and inshallah see how we can implement it in our lives. So I say inshallah we'll, we'll elaborate more in a few minutes and I say to, my, to our viewers Stay with us, we will meet shortly, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Now we have come to see how selfishness is very likely or has the potential to destroy any strong relationship and it is the enemy of brotherhood that is in al-islam and we managed to see how the prophet wasallam directed us to avoid that and to love for our brothers and our sisters the good things that we love for ourselves now how throughout the daily life day-to-day -day life we come across situations have you come across something or some situation that helps you understand how evil selfishness is and how it's opposite to be generous towards the people, mm -hmm. how it might help improve that relationship and strengthen it. For example, brotherhood, maybe among the brothers, a brother was in need, something like that. Abdul Rahmani have something? Once uh, uh, we didn't have the like uh, we didn't have that much food to share. Mm -hmm. and there was a brother. He was so selfish. So I was eating it and. Yeah, and making noises like he, that, that he really is enjoying it and yeah. he didn't even share so that made me feel how selfishness could be uh -huh. yeah okay. when, I'm, when I'm a victim of it okay do you feel that this affected the relationship between you and him actually I mean, not really because uh, days passed and I forgot and alhamdulillah it's a blessing that us as humans we forget alhamdulillah but uh, it affected the same day only yeah you know what happens with selfishness, the problem with selfishness, that it's not, sometimes it is, it becomes manifest in the minor issues, small things, but the problem with selfishness is that it grows. And sometimes it might become a life-death choice. So some people, they choose to sacrifice the benefit or the interest of their brothers for the sake of them uh, getting something small. Sometimes, for example, we can see how this happened in one battle from the companions may Allah be pleased with them that one day during the battle three of them were wounded so one had water and he wanted to give you know when the person is wounded he needs water because he loses blood so another companion came and he saw saw one of them who was asking for water and he was severely wounded so now there was another one now the companion heard this one asking for water he came to him and he wanted to give him water so when he's in that very moment, he was giving him the water. This one who's wounded, he heard another one was asking for water and he was badly wounded. So he said, give him the water. He needs it more than I do. You see how a man in the heart and you see that bond, they cared for one another. They were concerned about one another. So he went to the second one and he wanted to give him water. He heard the third one asking for water and that one was really badly wounded. So he said, this man needs water more than I do. Give it to him. I don't want it. He went to the third one. Once he came to him, he found that he had already died. So he went back to the second one. He had already died. He went to the first one. He had already died. You see how these beautiful examples are? This is how the companions were. Because they had a man in the hut. Who was their teacher? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have you ever come across something like that? Personal experience? It's not personal, but uh, actually, yeah, being selfish is like a disease, as you said. Very so good. it's like isolating himself or herself away from the Muslim community. Very good. Because, it's a uh, shield of yeah. your selfishness that you yes, yourself yeah. with. You yeah. naturally reject a person who's being selfish. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're going away from the brotherhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not like uh, being in, in one group. No, you're isolating yourself. Maybe within the group, but the group won't interact with you. That's a good example that you gave. Really, when you have selfishness, you are shielding yourself with your that self-centered and 
mentality, yeah. you really you block yourself from the others. This is a very good thing. And uh, we could see that why Allah gave ascendancy to the Muslims at the time of the companions. Because they implemented this brotherhood. And you see, because they had no selfishness, they loved one another. And their brotherhood kept growing and growing and becoming stronger. And they had love for one another. Because they were concerned with the, they would give precedence to their brothers over themselves. They weren't concerned about themselves. So I want you to imagine, how would you imagine Abdul Rahman, the Muslim society, if they really managed to get rid of selfishness? Or I can't say rid of selfishness, but just to control it. Control it and implement this, the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ in this regard. How could you Actually, imagine people would be? There will be more khair, more blessings mm -hmm. to share. Just the fact that we're sharing and we sacrifice, Mashallah. and uh, it will implement more, uh, more barakah and more blessings from Allah in the society. That's a real important value and in the Muslim society. And it will make people also live in happiness. So a lot of other benefits that I, I can't even talk about because there's so much. You know, one of the evil things of selfishness is that when you are selfish, you won't care if you cause other people harm, if you benefit yourself. Those who steal, well, they cause others harm, and they, or they cause, or they destroy other people's lives sometimes in order to get a small benefit, get some little money. Uh, those who backbite do the same. They want to enjoy themselves and, you know, amuse, them, entertain their guests yeah. and enjoy their the friends, and enjoy the conversation. <laughs> what? Well, you are eating the meat of your brother. Subhanallah. And. Well, selfishness leads to more evil. You, sometimes people kill others out of selfishness. Exactly. They do that. So selfishness is at the bottom of a lot of evil. It will cause people to more evil. Because you, are, you always care about yourself. So this is why Islam came to rid the people of this sense mm -hmm. of selfishness and this tendency. You have to control it. It is necessary to a certain extent in order to survive and satisfy your needs. But when it comes to the benefit or the interest of the whole society you have to be giving you have to be generous yeah. you have to compromise your own benefits sometimes and in Islam well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that so, uh, well, jihad has been made obligatory upon you while you hate it and sometimes you dislike something or you hate it while it is good for you yeah. and Allah is telling us that to be good to the people to be generous not to be selfish is good for you and our main concern is about brotherhood now so if we do away with selfishness, we can maintain good brotherhood. For example, if I have this brotherhood with Abdul Rahman, and some, for example, some food comes, and I know Abdul Rahman is hungry, and I myself, I need some food. So, for example, I take all this food for myself. And now Abdul Rahman doesn't like that. Definitely, he doesn't like it. Yes, of course. Because what? He's hungry. Yeah. He hasn't eaten all day long, and he feels hungry, and he's waiting for any food to come. I take all that away yeah. from him. This is not brotherhood. A person who has Iman, good Iman, he doesn't do that. Isn't that true, Abdul Rahman? Exactly. So the person, if he has Iman, he doesn't really take the things that his brothers, his brothers need and take, keep that for himself. And he doesn't care about them. For example, now if I say some food comes and Abdul Rahman is hungry and I'll take all the food for myself. I need some food, but I can share it with Abdul Rahman. I can share it, but I take all the food and I keep Abdul Rahman hungry. How would you feel about that, Abdul Rahman? If I, let's say somebody else, not mm -hmm. myself, someone takes the food, you haven't eaten all day long now, and you're so tired, and you need that food. So somebody takes all of that, how would you feel? Would that really affect the kind of brotherhood you have with that brother? I feel that he kind of committed a crime. Okay, so you won't <laughs> forgive that person. Actually, what it is, it really affects brotherhood. If you see that your brother is not concerned for you, and he only cares about himself. It's a mutual thing. Brotherhood is a mutual love. You can't really have the same thing towards him, except out of generosity, but not sharing the same feeling towards him. What if like, someone notices he has some selfishness in him? So how can we cure his self? Like, what's like, uh, That's the a very mean? important question. Because we said we're human beings. We have this yeah. kind of selfishness. Yeah, sure. yeah. If I find that I am selfish, how can I deal with the situation? I have to know that. Okay, with every problem, we have to look for the solution in the Qur'an in the and the Sunnah. Now the Prophet tells us in the awesome. Qur'an, no one will truly believe until he loves for his brother all the good things that he loves 
for himself. Now, we will not achieve Iman until we rid ourselves of this problem, selfishness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how could we do that? We could do that first of reflecting upon the reality of this life. Allah tells us in that this life is only mata' and lahu, is only enjoyment. This life is only enjoyment. It's a passing moment. It's a test. Not last. Yeah. And so it's a test to us. And this is a trial. Allah has put this us and in, in us this disposition towards being concerned with your own benefits and your own interests. It's natural and it is a test to control it. Now how can we control that? First of all, you have Iman in Allah. That this life is but a test. So it's not about how much you get in this life, but it's about how much you say for yourself on the day of judgment. So it's about how much you you give. And when you read this hadith that no one of you will truly believe until he loves for his brother the good things that he loves for himself, then okay. You realize that I have to deal with this problem. First of all, if you have this intention and this desire to solve this problem, this is the first step. You take it. The second one is that you bear in mind all the time that this life is but a test and it's about giving. It's about sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Allah says, mm -hmm. Do the people think that they will be left alone to say we believe and why they have not been tested yet? You have to be tested. Exactly. Second thing is to see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I contemplate in the verse إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً The believers are brothers to one another. So brother that means you, we share things. Yeah. And yes. the other thing as well to read Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He went through a lot of harm, a lot of hardship. Why? To convey the message to us. To make Islam reach us. To save the people from the hellfire. SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ sacrificed a lot and he compromised. And he suffered a lot of pain for the sake of saving the people from the hellfire. So you see this? You follow this example. It's in your heart. It moves, it drives you to have love for the others and to do sacrifice. You see? And the more you recite the Quran, the more you understand this life and the more you understand that you have to give in order to earn Allah's pleasure. Allah says in the Hadith al Qudusi, He says, Ibn Adam, Anfiq unfiq alayh. O son of Adam, you pay more, you give more to my servants, I will give you more. So you know, the more you give the people, the more Allah will give you. So it's solved. It's done. It's and over with now. That, Alhamdulillah. That's what I am, uh, I've heard from a brother uh, before that he, when he wants money, he gives out money. So it comes back to him. Subhanallah. Yeah. So this is from Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now so, inshallah, it has become clear to us how selfishness destroys brotherhood. And so we have to do our best to get rid of it. And think, always think, put yourself in other people's shoes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Put yourself in their position. Uh, what they need, how do they feel, and try to feel that, so that you will be inclined more to give them. And remember that if you give people, Allah will give you, inshallah. And we make our hearts attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So inshallah, Allah will help us inshallah. do away with selfishness and to give more for the sake of Allah. So Allah will give us more in this life and on the day of judgment. I hope we have benefited from that. I say Jazakumullah khairan for your Jazakum contribution Allah. to this beautiful subject, inshallah. And I say to our viewers, Jazakumullah khairan for bearing with us and listening to us and taking the pains of benefiting inshallah from this beautiful prophetic etiquette to do away with selfishness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us and to bless us all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.